Bethel. This is Amy. I hope you guys are all having a great week. I've been going to Bethel my whole life and this summer I actually got the opportunity to serve as a summer student for Bethel working with the children's ministry which looked different this summer but it was really cool to come up with creative ways to reach out to the kids. This past year I went to Prairie Bible College and took a year of outdoor leadership. Did get cut short because of COVID, which was which was hard, but but yeah, it was an amazing year. And in the fall, I am going back to the U of A for my second year in the science kinesiology degree. And yeah, that's a little bit about me before I start. So for today's devotion, the theme is savor. Savor the present moment. So to start off, I'm going to read in Matthew 6. I'm going to read verses 33 to 34, which is kind of the ending part to the do not worry um, part in Matthew 6, where it's talking about um, not worrying about tomorrow's worries or the future worries, but to be present and yeah, to seek him. So Verse 33, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I am reading The Screwtape Letters by C.S. Lewis. It's in the perspective of this uncle devil is writing letters to his nephew, which is also a devil, on how to be a good devil and kind of convert this person um, who is currently a Christian. So I want to read just a couple things from one of the chapters that I'm reading and the uncle wants the nephew to keep the human always thinking about the past or the future but never never the present moment. When it talks about the enemy it's actually talking about God because the perspective is kind of flipped. So here we go. The humans live in time but our enemy destines them to eternity. He therefore, I believe, wants them to attend chiefly to two things, to eternity itself and to the point of time which they call the present. For the present is the point at which time touches eternity. Of the present moment, and of it only, humans have an experience similar to the experience which our enemy has of reality as a whole. In it alone, freedom and actuality are offered them. Our business is to get them away from the eternal and from the present. With this view, we sometimes tempt a human to live in the past, but it is far better to make them live in the future. For the future inflames hope and fear. Also, it is unknown to them, so that in making them think about it, we make them think of unrealities. The future is, of all things, the least like eternity. It is the most completely temporal part of time, for the past is frozen and no longer flows, and the present is all lit up with eternal rays. God does not want men to give the future their hearts or to place their treasure in it. We do. We want a whole race perpetually in pursuit of the rainbow's end, never honest, nor kind, nor happy now. The do not worry passage in Matthew really speaks to the struggle we have of future worries or not being content in the present moment. In Matthew 6, like Jesus speaks to focus on him now and he will provide. Sometime in June, wanting to have a nice quick 5k run and try to get a personal best time so I wanted to push myself so I started the run started my running app a couple minutes in I get a horrible runner's cramp so I have to walk and once again I got distracted by some cattle in the field uh, next to our place that were running towards me I kind of got distracted and stood and admired them for a bit uh, getting back on track with my run I checked my running app I discovered that a couple seconds in to my run, it had stopped working. By this point, I kind of felt like God was 
was trying to get my attention and to stop having me worry about getting a good time but to just savor the time I had outside and so I just decided to walk and was like okay I'm just gonna savor this time and I definitely noticed a lot more things that I wouldn't have noticed if I was just focused on running like all the different birds that evening and the sunset was beautiful the evening was so quiet and still and yeah I really felt God speaking to me on about savoring time that I had and yeah I just really felt filled with joy and peace after my run I kind of wrote down what I had been reflecting on in my run and what I felt like God was telling me so I'm just gonna read a little bit of it. Savor. We humans are always worried about getting to the next goal of something, constantly challenging ourselves with new times, great distances, improved knowledge, new things, and getting better. Usually when I go for a run, I feel this way. I feel the need to beat my last time, run a greater distance, or run without ever taking a break and walking. I do this because I want to get better and I constantly want to challenge myself, which is good. It is good to grow and want to challenge yourself to grow. But there's a fine line between that and being and not being content with the present moment. Consistently wanting to change gets to the point where you're not able to savor the present moment you're living in. If you're constantly striving for what you could be, you get disappointed in the present moment when you are not where you want to be or you get dis disappointed when you have a cheat day or miss a workout when you think like that are you truly savoring the present moment god gave you today and he's concerned about what you will do in the present not just what you will become in the future i got reminded of that when i was on my run god was saying to me amy you push yourself to change a lot and you focus on goals but how about you just be happy at where you're at and just enjoy the present time with me. Come to your father because he wants to be present with you, present with you right now. And it doesn't matter where you are in your spiritual walk because he just wants you to come into his arms and just be with him. I think many times I want to spend time with God and be still, but I just feel like I need to be more spiritually deeper in my relationship so I try to read books or do more studies to get to know him more. Jesus in his ministry met people at where they were at. God does the same in our personal relationship with him. He says, come my child, don't let you not spending time with me before be a barrier for spending time with me now. I want to fill you with peace and joy in my present. Doesn't matter, it doesn't matter if you have all the answers figured out or if you feel distant from me i still love you i still care about you and i still want to spend time with you so come child savor the time that you can share with me and our relationship will grow deep roots savor this moment yeah, that was just a little bit of my ideas of savor and kind of what came to me on that run and yeah, I just wanted to share it with you all and I hope you found something encouraging in what I had to say. Um, I would encourage you guys to, yeah, kind of reflect on what does it mean to savor? What does that look like to you? Taking time to be present in the moment and yeah, what does it mean to savor the presence of God? Um, because throughout this whole COVID thing, I think that's been something that I've heard from a lot of people is that they're less busy and they're able to just be in the present moment. So I'm just going to end in prayer. Dear God, I just want to thank you for today and thank you for every single person who is watching this. Lord, I just pray that your presence would be among us all and that we would be able to slow down and just live in the present moment, Lord, and just savor, savor the time we have and the gifts that you have blessed us with. 
Lord, I just pray that you would go, go before us today in this day and just open our eyes to you working in our everyday lives. I pray for the whole Bethel community that they would just feel peace and joy and know that they are not alone in this time and they can lift their worries and burdens to you, Lord. I just want to thank you of how great you are and that we do not need to be afraid or worried because you are in control. I want to thank you for that, Lord. And yeah, just lift up, lift up this prayer to you, God. I pray this in your name. Amen. See you, Bethel.